Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna paint a mouse on a branch of blackberries, and I gotta tell you, I don't know how it's gonna go, but we're gonna we're gonna give it a shot, okay? What else can I say? I'm gonna start by drawing this kind of like potato shape here. Uh, hopefully, you can see this. So I got a potato shape. I'm gonna do a rounded kind of triangle on it. Got a little. Um, Little ear here. This might be kind of a fun one. Uh, let your kids paint along with you. Um, big, big eye there. Another one over here, kind of big beady eye. Most have the beady eyes. Little snout. So cute, so cute. And let's see, get a raspberry right here. The photo I'm using is from Unsplash. It's a little mouse. Look how big that, strap, that raspberry is. Let's see, you can see four fingers. And put a couple other little raspberries or blackberries. Here, let's see, who is tail is going to wrap around one. Going to have the back foot kind of right up, right up next to his body. Back toe there. I just thought this was cute. Sometimes you see a picture, it's like, oh, wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be fun to, to paint? Okay, now we're going to get some little raspberries from to be standing on. I'm going to keep this in kind of a loose illustrative style, so shouldn't be too difficult. Got this tail around a raspberry. I'm going to put a few little leaves in here. I'll do another leaf down here. All right. Hey, we got our sketch. Let's just hold that up a little bit away from the, without the glare of the light so you can kind of see what we got there. And I think this might be a good one to wet the back because um, it'll help keep our paper flat. I'm just working on a um, just a cutting mat here on top of my table. I wouldn't put this directly down on a wood table just because that, that could damage the wood. But like a piece of plexiglass or glass or plastic, anything like that will work. And it'll keep it from moving around and it'll keep it flat too. So let's give this a nice... Wedding on the front as well. I don't always do this, but um, but for certain subjects, I think it works really well. I think it works really well for animals because um, they've got that fur. I'm just gonna wipe off the excess water around the edge so I don't get back runs. All right, and I just kind of blot a little bit because if it looks like it's pretty. Pretty shiny. Wipe my brush off here and just even it out. All right, so now I am going to get some colors in the background. I'm going to use, um, oh, this is a pretty color. I'm just using these paints because I was using them for a project a little bit ago. This is kind of like a, um, I think called a lavender. I figured this is kind of like a fun, whimsical painting, so it'd be fun to use some whimsical colors I usually don't use. Get a nice mottled background. When you wet the back of the paper also, you don't have as much controllable running. You'll get the blending without all the uncontrollable running, which is, which can be really, really nice. Really control where that paint goes. I'm going to do some hooker's green. You can take some sap green, add a little viridian into it if you don't have the hookers and you want that exact tone. Or just use whatever you like, whatever you have. I always encourage you to draw, <coughs> pardon me, 
draw what you like. Don't draw what, you know, don't worry about it being something that's worthy of a painting. Just if you like it, then it's worthy of a painting. Don't worry about anything beyond that. And then I'll take some Prussian blue, mix it with a hooker's green, get a nice dark, get some of that over here. Give the mouse a little bit of a cover, get a little bit of protection, like, so people can't see him stealing the raspberries. All right, uh, I'm gonna grab some yellow ochre. <clears throat> you can also use raw sienna. Add that for kind of like a highlight on our little brown mouse. Grab a little bit of um, this peach color. This is kind of like, a, a lot of times it's called Jean Brilliant in watercolor. Um, it's kind of like just like an apricot color. It's, it's a very um, opaque, neutralized pink. It's often called flesh tone in uh, Asian sets. I don't know what they call it in this one. I can't remember. Because um, oftentimes in Asian sets, they'll call like hot pink. They call that peach. So it could be, it can be a little confusing. These paints are from China. And in like China and Korea and Japan, watercolor is a much more popular hobby. So they have a lot more options. So I'm gonna take some burnt umber. I think that's what this one is. I'm, I'm going by what you'd commonly call. I'm gonna clean my brush. I don't wanna mix it in with that, that, um, that peachy color because it's too opaque, it'll muddy it. Um, grab some burnt umber and add that in. Now I'm not worried about any of this bleed out because it gives me the fluffy look. And I'm just using, I'm using a pretty big brush. This is a half inch um, filbert and it's a, a synthetic faux fur type. Like, but it's supposed to act like squirrel, so it's very absorbent. So it does hold quite a bit of, um, of water. So if you're having a hard time controlling your paint, use a golden haired brush, like a golden tacklon, because it won't carry quite as much water or pigment. In fact, I might switch because I feel like that's bringing too much. I'm not going to be concerned with any blend, any bleed out that I'm getting here at this point. As long as it's not running uncontrollably, I'm going to be fine with it. I've switched to a, an espresso by Roland Lang Nicolet. Again, it's, it's just a little bit firmer. It's a synthetic, but it's, uh, it's a little bit firmer, not as slippery as some other synthetics. Okay, I'm um, gonna get just a little bit of, I'm trying to think what pink I want, like a quinacridone rose, um, because I want to use a pink, but I wanna use one that I'm gonna use elsewhere. I'm gonna get that in the ears, on the paws, in the snout a little bit. All right, uh, I think I'll leave it at that point for now and put in those raspberries and black or blackberries, I guess. And let's start off with some of the quinacridone rose, I think. And because I'm not really too concerned with things drying on me, I'm just gonna go and put these lighter colors in first, this lighter pink. I'm not filling everything in because, oh, and that was gonna be a leaf, but I guess it's raspberry now. Um, I'm not gonna worry about filling everything in because I will be going in with other colors. Now I'm gonna take some Prussian blue and I'm gonna mix it in with that uh, rose and get a nice deep plum color. 
here, oops, I'll just move that. Actually, when I just turn my palette around so you can see the mixing versus the pans of color, it'd probably be a lot more, make a lot more sense. I'm just kind of dabbing it in so I can get some of the work done of painting the raspberries. Actually, if I had a more blunt round, that would work even better. Something that's not so pointy would work a little bit better if you have one. Um, maybe an old round brush that's kind of lost its point would work really well. I think all the ones I have here are pretty pointy. This one might be a little bit, a little bit duller. Let's try that. We'll see how that one works. That's still pretty pointy, actually. Oh, that's too wet. So I'll mix some more up and make it a little bit thicker. I'm working from dried out paints. That's how I prefer to work with watercolors, just to let them dry. I think this is gonna flood too much. Yeah, it's gonna flood quite a bit, but... We'll get that shape down anyway. This is one of those paintings where I'm not exactly sure how it's going to come out, so it's kind of a fun surprise to me as well to paint it. <laughs> I've been interested in doing more uh, loose and free work lately. And I'm gonna grab some green. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take some. Let's see. What yellow do I want? I think I'll do. Uh, I think I'll do some lemon yellow. I already have a warm yellow. If I need to add it in there, I've got the yellow ochre. So I think I'll do like a lemon. Grab some of the hookers green. And add that to some of the. Uh, Raspberries. And I've got a raspberry in there, but I don't know if I want to paint that until I'm a little bit, till things are a little bit drier here. Um, let's see. I think I'll do some leaves. I'm going to go with a flat brush. With that. I'm going to go with a half inch flat. And I think I'll just pick up the uh, hooker's green right from the pan and then maybe just pick up a little bit of that lighter mix. I'm just kind of hanging a little bit more water on there. Not really thrilled with that. Let's see. That's a little bit better. I think maybe I'll just do a bunch of leaves over here and let them be kind of fuzzy for now. And then I can do more, um, I could do a couple in focus ones closer to the mouse where I want it to be a little bit more uh, in focus. Gosh, that's dark. And I'm just going to kind of mess that part up because I need it to be a little bit fuller in here. I'm going to put in a few, like put in those other little raspberries there. I don't want to have my brush too wet because I don't want to, I don't want it to bleed too much onto my mouse, but just with how much it's dried already, look at how, how more crisp the 
the lines are just in that little amount of time. I love this technique. It's uh, I really recommend trying it, especially if you live someplace where it's really, um, really dry because you'll have a little bit more uh, control over your washes and stuff if you can if you can do that. Um, let's see, I want to get a little bit more in here and also just kind of under the under the mouse to kind of um, get you know his his contours so you could see like where the background stops and the mouse begins. Put it in there, a little leaf color. And let's get um, this I think we can do the stem at this point. Kind of regret all of these leaves here, but eh, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll fix it. I'm going to do a little bit more to the raspberries while we're in this kind of in-between stage. Um, let's see. I wonder if I have, I have a little silicone tool here. I don't know if I still have it here or not. Yes. Is this the right one? Hmm. Actually, it's not rounded. I don't know if that's going to work. Um... Yeah, that's not going to work. That's all right. We can do back to the round brush. And actually, let me go with a smaller brush. I think a liner is going to hold too much water. Let's go with like a little spotter here. Um, let's mix up some real dark purple. We'll take the, the uh, Prussian blue and the rose. And we can just kind of go around, draw in the little, the little uh, sections of our blackberries. Instead of dipping my brush in water, I'm just dipping it in with some of the more diluted paint there, so I get, um, I get more of that effect. My goodness. I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but the kids are being extremely loud upstairs. They've been doing the driver's ed lessons on Zoom, and uh, their lessons ended about an hour ago. So they're probably feeling a little uh, stir-crazy. I just want to get some detail in here. I'm not sure. Um, I might add some colored pencil afterwards. I love doing that, like especially if I've got something that's really illustrative because uh, it gives you that kind of whimsical like storybook look. And I can go in and add more color at any time. I think it's so neat how the paper is still damp, but I'm able to keep like a pretty crisp line just because the paint on my brush is... Um, it's it's uh, not super wet. This is just like drawing with a brush. If you like to draw, this is a fun project. If you don't like to draw, you might want to trace the image. And this might not be the technique because you do kind of have to redraw and redraw and redraw because you lose your lines a little bit. But, you know, it depends on what, what you like, really. I like it. I like to draw. I'm in that kind of carefree, mellow summertime of mind. I just want to doodle. And get a little bit more. I need to mix up a little bit more. That Prussian blue is super, super dark. Um, so, you know, Prussian blue has the reputation of not being light fast. And, um, what happens is that it can kind of change in the light, but if you put it in dark, it, the colors restore. So if you have ever an issue with your Prussian blue not behaving or going dark on you, just put it in, um, you take it out of the light 
for um, for a couple of days and it should pop back because you should have your color back again. So I really haven't had that, had much of an issue. Um, it's probably more of an issue if you're living somewhere with a lot of sun. This place more southern or, or if it's hung in more of a sunny area, but I haven't had an issue with, uh, with Prussian blue myself. But it does have, you know, it's a thing. You're not losing your mind if that if you're painting something with Prussian blue and you're like, oh my gosh, my colors all gone. It just looks dark and blah. I'm just gonna throw in a little bit more color. Color. I don't need all this outlined. That's another thing. You don't wanna. You don't have to outline everything. You can go back in and just kind of like hit it with some color. I think this is gonna take longer than I anticipated. I'm always looking for those like, you know, kind of quick, you know, quick products that wow people to share on YouTube. But, uh, you know, unless you're time lapsing, I know it seems like most things need a little time. And I got a noisy water pump going, as usual, folks. Because even though I'm in my new recording space, it's still in the basement. All right, I'm doing less details I get away from the mouse. I do want to do a little bit of something else there. Let's grab a little bit of green for some of this unripe berry. Do a little bit of pink. That one would be tart, you can tell that. Just by looking at it, some pink on that one too. And there, I think I'm gonna let this dry, let things quiet down a bit, and we'll be back. Okay, we're gonna work on some more of the papers dry. And um, I'm gonna take a little bit of Prussian blue here. I'm gonna take a little bit of that burnt umber that we used on the fur and make a real dark color here that I can use, a little purple to that, that I can use for the eye. Um, I have to be honest, I'm getting kind of bored with this painting. Um, I don't know why exactly. Probably because I've been interrupted a few times and it's, I find it very difficult to get back in the, back in the groove when that happens sometimes. I don't know if you feel the same way, but, uh, but definitely have been feeling that a bit. And let's give it a little bit of a pink on the nose. I'm kind of thinking about just going right in with colored pencils, to be honest. Yeah, why not? You know, really. Uh, I'm going to grab just kind of like a, um, this is a French gray. It's 70% French gray. French gray is kind of like a warm brownish color. And I can get some good texture here. I do have to be careful about getting around the eyes where they're just, I've just wet them. And I'm probably am gonna to need to sharpen some pencils because I'll, this, this is my new set of Prismacolors. I brought my old ones up to my play art desk upstairs. And, um, and so like these just have the fact, a lot of these colors just have the factory points on them, which are not as, as a, uh, long as I like them so they don't quite have that taper and then they wear down really quick but I appreciate the fact that they sharpen them before they send them out because that does uh that way you know, kind of know if it's good they're gonna break or not I think they would break in the in the factory so I'm just gonna kind of turn my brushes I my uh pencils I grow and just put in these little furs for right now I think I actually do have a sharpener in my dish right here. So I will sharpen as I need. That way I don't have to have that really loud. Um, I usually use a manual sharp, I mean a electric sharpener because the Prismacolors will, 
be finicky and they will break and um, that's kind of a bummer. I don't know if I can get that sharp enough with that tiny and maybe I can. There we go. On that one I can. Um, so that is kind of a bummer. I find that I have much better luck with a um, with an electric sharpener, but it's so loud. So if I wasn't filming, I would definitely be using the electric. This paper has is a cold press surface, so it does have some texture to it. Um, which is going to wear down my pencils really fast. I love these pencils though. You don't have to put a lot of pressure to be able to get a lot of um, color down. So I'm like using like hardly any pressure, which is really nice. So I'm just going in with this French gray 70 to get the darker tones. And because the most is kind of like a like a variegated brown, kind of tawny, mousy, it's like a mousy color, like a mousy blonde kind of tawny, tawny fur, so I'm just kind of um, shading, really. And can see a little bit of a detail on the foot, so I do want to get that. Maybe I'll go, I'm going to leave my, my colors out here that I'm using because I don't want to, um, I don't want to forget and grab the wrong color. This color here does seem a little bit too pigmented for what I'm doing, but I can always tone it down with a white or something after if I want to. And I'm going to need to do that because the, uh, the paint from the raspberry or blackberry bled into the little fingers here. Bit of that peach on the tail that will look, work, look really well. Oh, I'm mumbling. I'm sorry, guys. It's uh, I think I think I'm on like vacation brain, you know. And like, if you've ever been like that, it's like your last week of work before you go on vacation, you're just like, la di da, <laughs> you know, just kind of feel like you're on vacation already. So, uh, my apologies. Uh, I tried to record a bunch more stuff last week so that I could be well ahead, but uh, hey. Only so much you can do, right? This yellow I think is too bright, but I've already put some in there, so I'm just gonna add it a few more places before I go to the next color. Um, let's see. I want like a warm brown. That might be a little too warm, but maybe when we layer it up, it'll be fine. This definitely needs a sharpen. I should probably just uh, go sharpen all my pencils. And I know I should turn the sharpener, not the pencil, but I just can't get the knack of that. It doesn't work for me. I also find working like on that little sharpener I have that's got two holes, a big and a little, the bigger hole works better for my Prismacolors. I, I don't know why. It's same thing with like eyeliner. If I have one of those sharpeners and I'm doing eyeliner because it's so soft or lipstick liner, um, I find that I get less breakage when I use the bigger hole in the sharpener, and I have no idea. I would think I would think it'd be the opposite, because I would think it would w wiggle more in that, but for whatever reason, it seems to work a little bit better for me. I know my hand's probably getting in the way. It's one of those like tutorials where I just feel like I'm apologizing for everything. <laughs> it's like, guys, man, you just shouldn't even. She didn't even watch this, man. It's really awful. <laughs> I'm sure there's something better on YouTube. <laughs> You've probably figured that out by now, though. Uh, a little more brown here. I think he's kind of cute. I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Do you get that way? I, you know, I should probably just... Uh... But now it's like, nope, I got it. I've got it. The show must go on because I don't have another idea. <laughs> Oh, just think of how refreshed I will be when I come back in a couple days. I'm probably back already by the time this airs, actually. 
Just throw a few little highlights on here. This is going to be a sketch. This is, you know, this should have been in the sketchbook, not on the actual piece of paper. Not that it matters. What do you do with all your old sketches? I just have like a big envelope, like a big portfolio envelope I throw them into. Do you have, do you have some really awesome way to store your, your sketches, your paintings? Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious. I'm a curious lady. All right. Oh, I feel like I'm a little more pink or purple or something. Something's just feeling kind of drab. You know? You know, I think it's just kind of drab. What is this color? This is uh, mahogany red. Something tells me this is going to be a drab color because I think mahogany, I think I like wood, which is like an earth tone and not a berry tone. But then again, also, if I'm looking at my reference photo, those berries are not very vibrant. They have a lot of that on them, so we'll just put some of that in here. Why not? Why not? I've got a mixed media thing happening here. And I'm glad I didn't do anything really detailed because I definitely know my interest is not going to last that long to make this a really detailed piece. And that's okay because, you know, that happens. Sometimes, sometimes you want to spend a lot of time, do a detailed piece. Other times you're just, you're just having a real hard time getting into it. And I, there are no sacred cows, you know, there are no sacred mice. Um, I think you have to be willing to abandon an artwork at any time. Because if you're not into it, you can always come back to it. But, you know, if you're not, if you're not enjoying it, if you're not into it, Why put your why put yourself through it, right? You can sharpen up a few lines here and there. But you know, I don't even know if I'm gonna post this tutorial. I'm kind of uh meh about the whole thing. I think maybe I will just grab my 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 brush here, put a few leaves. Just kind of to, um, oh my, just to kind of nestle him in a little protection here. I do like that a little bit better. Sometimes it's when I like, I feel like I'm okay, I'm going to abandon this piece and then I don't care. And then that's when, you know, things come together because I'm not caring anymore. Do you guys find that? I mean, that's happened to me a couple times this week. I'm kind of like, ah, uh, like the old um, Sesame Street skit. And there'd be the, I don't know what his name is. He's like the puppet that plays piano. I think it's the same puppet that's the game show host, but I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. It's been a long time since I've seen Sesame Street. But you know, he would be like Twinkle, Twinkle Little Planet, and then he'd be like, oh, that's not right. And he'd like his heading on the uh on the um on the keyboard. That's kinda how I feel sometimes. But then it's like when I stop worrying about it, then I like it so much better. And and then it's fine. And sometimes it's like I won't look at it for a few days, and then when I look at it again, I'm like, well, that's not horrible. Um, but then it takes that time when you're in the thick of it, it can just feel so like awful. Like ah, this is garbage. Why won't it work? Why won't it? You know. Often I find if I kind of splash on some like more pigmented colors in a loose fashion, then I like it a lot more. I like that better. Maybe some splatter. That's always my, uh, that's always my go-to. It's like, if I really don't like it, if it's really not working, I add some splatter. That usually does a trick and it helps me clean off my palette so I don't feel so wasteful. Because sometimes you know, sometimes it just doesn't, you're just not happy with it. But 
I think that's better than I thought. I think that's fine. Um, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial for what it's worth. Um, always just, if you're inspired to try something, try it. It might come out, it might not, but uh, you'll never know until you try. And um, I'm hoping this is one of these paintings that the watercolor fairy visits and it looks much better tomorrow. <laughs> you gotta have you gotta have faith in the watercolor fairy, man. He'll come and fix your paintings on you. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. And next time it'll be better. That's all I can say. The bar's low. The next tutorial will be better. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.